This is Terry Kurtz online reporting on Victor Valley High Desert and Mojave River Valley events, activities, entertainment, sports, and history. A story of a hometown hero. Megan Jastrab of Apple Valley, first high desert athlete to be an Olympics medalist. Megan Jastrab, a 19-year-old cyclist from Apple Valley, won a bronze medal at the Tokyo Summer Olympics. Megan and her U.S. cycling team won bronze in the women's team pursuit, having also set a national record earlier in the Games. Megan Jastrab was homeschooled in Apple Valley. She attended Milligan University in Tennessee. Today, at the time of this report, she races professionally for UCI Women's World Team. But Megan Jastrab's story has taken dramatic twists and turns, from the heights of success to a devastating low point, and how she has persevered and serves as a powerful example to athletes of all ages. Three years after winning bronze at the 2020 Olympics, she was having an outstanding spring in 2023, gaining the podium in three major races, And then things took several turns for the worse. A series of setbacks, including a crash, a fall, and an illness, was climaxed when she was struck by a car in December 2023, five days before starting a race in Spain. She suffered a fractured pelvis and a torn gluteus medius, injuries requiring rehab and time to heal. She was, nevertheless, hoping to be back racing around mid-March of 2024, but that proved to be overly optimistic. Things moved more slowly than expected. She spent several weeks in the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. She said, As an athlete, you want to be back on the bike doing max efforts and getting back to racing as soon as possible, but with this injury and the glute muscle tear, it's more of a slow build because I'm still not allowed to do sprints or max torque efforts. My goals were definitely the spring classics this year. Since those have been removed from my schedule due to injury, my focus shifts to just getting back to racing now. The biggest goal at the moment is being healthy and being cleared medically to race again to just get back to it. Big Bear sharpshooter Kim Rode makes Olympics history in 2016. Six-time Olympic shooting medalist Kim Rode is an American double trap and skeet shooter, a six-time Olympic medal winner, including three gold medals and six-time national champion in double trap. She is the most successful female shooter in Olympics history, the only triple Olympic champion, and the only woman to have won two Olympic gold medals for double trap. She won a gold medal in skeet shooting at the 2012 Summer Olympic Games, equaling the world record of 99 out of 100 clays. Most recently, she won the bronze at the Rio 2016 Olympics, making her the first Olympian to win a medal on five different continents and the first Summer Olympian to win an individual medal at six consecutive Summer Games. Kim Rode is featured in a wave of video ads by the campaign against Proposition 63 that argue the gun control initiative will hurt competitive and sports shooters and women. The three 35-second web ads have been posted by the Coalition for Civil Liberties, a campaign committee formed by the California Rifle and Pistol Association, which is the official state affiliate of the National Rifle Association, the NRA. The ads attack an initiative by Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom that would require background checks and the keeping of sales records for people purchasing ammunition, outlaw ammunition magazines that hold more than 10 rounds, and provide a process for taking guns away from Californians convicted of felonies. Rode says in one ad that she has to fire 800 rounds of ammunition each day to keep her accuracy. If Gavin Newsom has his way, it'll make it incredibly hard to keep my skills, said Rode, whose bronze for skeet shooting this past summer in the Rio de Janeiro Olympics was her sixth medal. Proposition 63 will inconvenience competitive shooters by requiring them to jump through bureaucratic hoops to keep their ammo, 
supply stocked. Terry Kurtz here throwing out an invitation for you to catch up with High Desert Sports Activity, your High Desert Sports Report, showing three times every day on Victor Valley TV, 7 and 11 every morning, 4 every afternoon. We hope you'll join us right here on Victor Valley TV. Three Apple Valley High School fabrication and welding students compete in Kentucky in the National Skills USA Welding Finals. I'm Bryce Avance, and this is the Skills USA co fabrication contest. First, uh, my name is Ryan Mindel. Uh, and how do you spell your last name, Ryan? M E I N D L. Ryan, what uh, what's your role on this team? Uh, I'm the captain, or and then the uh, stick welder or arc welding. What's your name? Uh, Jaden Roop. How do you spell your last name? Is uh, it J-A-Y-D-E-N? Yes, sir. And last name, how do you spell it? R-O-U-P-E. Okay. I'm uh, oxy welding, uh, or MIG welding, and some flux core welding. Uh, so kind of an all-around everything I do. Yeah. I'm the TIG welder. What, what is it? The TIG welder. What, what is a TIG welder? It's a different process of welding. The consumable electrode melts the metal and you dip a filler rod into it okay. to make the weld and a fuse the two pieces of metal together. Uh, MIG welding, so you have a, a gun with the trigger and it's the wires fed through the gun, the copper wire. Um, and then I do flux core welding, it's the same thing as stick welding, just same thing as MIG, just with a flux coating on the outside of that wire. It's a GMA, G -M -A -W, and it's a type of process that we use, uh, which we have a stinger and an electrode that has a continuous burn. We're high school fabrication, so we uh, they give us a design set plans of what they want us to build for, for nationals. Usually they give us material, but we want to build. This one they give us what we need to build, what materials we're using, and how we're going to build it, and how much time, which is six and a half hours. So with the teamwork process, we all have to take our own, like, the chunk, of the, carry our own weight, you know, if it makes sense, where one person's cutting, one person's welding, one person's grinding, or sanding. Uh, we got to make it work and flow like a river, you know, you can't have any obstructions. Uh, and with these practices, it helps build as a team and prepares us for our competition in Kentucky. So this is a rocket stove. Uh, so what it technically, what it does is right here you have your wood feeder and it feeds it down into here in the bottom here and it creates your, uh, your smoke or flame or whatever you want to use. And then it builds up into here, you put your meat on top and you barbecue up here. This latch folds open here. Um, then you have a little slide here where the ash falls out, clean it all out, push it back in, and on the back you have, uh, you can do it call a potato, a potato warmer. Uh, you feed your potatoes with aluminum foil and slide them in here at the top, and then take them out at the bottom, that way they're warm, nice. We are practicing, so we build two of them, here's one, and we're building in the middle of building another one. And when we get there to Kentucky, we have to build a whole another one in six and a half hours. Uh, it's more mentally uh, challenging knowing the time, uh, working with all these materials and hoping to get everything cut right and under the time constraint. Uh, but with these practices, it helps a lot to build that confidence up and prepare us for this weekend. Right, so what's the toughest part of it? Is it the time pressure or just the, it, the, the craftsmanship? Almost, almost everything. We have to cut everything and make sure everything fits nice and we run into problems and we run into things that work well. It, it's real challenging. Uh, with If there's hiccups, you're going to have to fix those hiccups. There's, that takes time. And we don't have much time, of course, uh, so everything has to f process just right and cut just right and everything. What classes have you taken at Apple Valley High School in welding and fabrication? Uh, so, uh, actually a lot of uh, physics. Physics helped me out a lot with this. And then I've been a welding student for four years, so we took the, the SOLIDWORKS class where you do all your computer design. Then, you know, you do your intermediate and go through all your welds, stick welding, TIG welding, MIG welding, uh, oxygen settling welding. Um, and then you go to the advanced class, and that's when you, use, you know, make your own projects. So, learning and figuring it out on yourself and having Penfold teach us and help us out kind of prepares us for everything. But learning the math between, you know, normal math and physics and trying to get everything put together is what really helped me. That's great. That's very, very good. Thank you for these comments. Thank We're you. Flying out Sunday morning. Yeah. To right now rainy.
Yeah, rainy, humid Kentucky. Kentucky, so uh, good luck. Look forward to hearing your Thank results. you. Apple Valley High School Computer and Media Pathway. Students prepare for Skills USA opening Thank round competition. Skills USA is a national program involving students who are preparing for careers in trade, technical, and skilled service occupations. Apple Valley sends Bye. 133 Three students to Skills USA competition this year for Sun Devils junior Samantha Sammy Solis her third year competing in Skills USA. So Career Pathway Showcase is a competition showcasing whatever CTE program you're in and how it can prepare you for career readiness. So basically we are doing, because we are in a informational technology program, so we are showcasing how camp has affected our community and like we're basing our project off of the way we share technology with schools in our area. So we're going to middle schools um, in the district and we're showing them certain skills that they might need or certain skills they're working on um, to kind of advance their program or whatever they're doing. Uh, for the past three years we've done this competition which is CPS where we're um, showcasing our academy and the community service project that we have to help the younger schools with their um, to, ready, to get them ready to come into camp. And then last year we attempted to do a um, promotional bulletin board, which came out good, which is the bulletin board right there, which mm -hmm. was showcasing skills. And we had to make a board to, to hold up in the office so that way people who would walk into the office, they would be informed as to what skills was. And if they were interested, they would come into the meetings that we would have throughout the month, throughout the years. Four Sun Devils freshmen comprise the entrepreneurship team. They will compete against teams with students from all grade levels. So entrepreneurship for Skills USA is really just a visual and kind of verbal presentation on the market and the uh, kind of company we build on our own. Um, I'm the chief financial officer, so I take care of all the finances and figure out what we need to do to make our app actually run. Uh, my name is Tice Ali, and I'm going to make the application. Right. I am in charge of uh, like getting our ads out there and publicity, mostly. Well, our app right now is kind of an uh, errand-based system to where you can post your errands that you need done, and you put it on a kind of message board for other people around the world to see. Um, this week I'm figuring out, I'm talking to an accountant to help me figure out how the numbers are going to work and what I need to um, like hire a coder and figure out our future financial. Okay. So I have to like figure out um, how much it'll like cost for each ad and then I'll like transfer that to our CFO. My favorite part is coding the app and figuring out how we're going to make it and showing our judges that we know how to do, make the app for it. I think, honestly, um, I'd say advertising. I think advertising is probably my favorite so far. Getting everything out there, figuring out how it actually gets out there. Good. My favorite part would probably be like the flexibility that we get to have with our like imagination, I guess, like how we get to create it by ourselves. Typical for photographers, they enjoy capturing on camera images of others not being on camera themselves. My main role in camp as a whole is photography. I'm pretty high up there, I would say, with editing. I'm not going to like brag too much, but I'm fairly good at editing photos. Caitlin, uh, what, what's your role here as a photographer? What do you do? I just... Take well, pictures? <laughs> yeah, mainly I just take pictures of our surroundings. Like, we go out during class and take pictures of the school and edit them so that we can put it as our Chromebook backgrounds. About photography, I enjoy just capturing the beautiful moments, um, just, just like what I do. I randomly take pictures of things that bring interest into me, and then I make it into something more when I edit it. I take pictures. I love editing pictures. That's my favorite part of taking pictures. All right. And uh, what grade are you in? I'm a junior. How does this all tie into Skills USA? When you get into the competition, what you submit, it can be of anything? Yeah. Is it happy school related or no? No. Oh. Well, when we get there, we take pictures of the school, but we take two pictures with us that don't have to do with anything. Wow. So you're judged in part on spontaneous of what you do that day. Oh. What has this whole camp program done for you at Apple Valley High School? Uh, it's given me the opportunity to uh, have, so Pariah has given us um, all these 
equipment that we're allowed to use, and so we can be creative. We can uh, make the certain videos that we want, or any creative process we can make. And so, um, the one thing I love about camp is just there's no right or wrong thing if you make a video. It's just like if you make a video and you personally like it, everyone's gonna enjoy it and find something in it that they like. And so it's just everyone's always um, accepting. And then, so that's always a good thing in a program like this. And then it's just we learn a lot through each other. It's almost like a family, so that's the biggest part too. Right, thank you guys. Good job. Competition in Skills USA underway this day at Granite Hills High School in Apple Valley. High school and now middle school teams compete. Winners in this regional leadership event advance to the state Skills USA competition. We've got 46 different schools represented here today for about 300 students. They're competing in things like job interview and promotional bulletin board, chapter display, uh, lots of different contests that are showing off their leadership skills that they've been working on all throughout their, their uh, high school careers. Well, we have to promote Skills USA in general. We have to provide occupational information, as in universities you could apply to that you can use skills you would say skills in a way it involves just a lot of hard work and we're, we're actually competing a chapter display so we have to display how our chapter is helping us get be successful in the workforce in the presentation I more sit off to the side but during working on the project, I'm more hands-on, so that's why we are all good together, because we all do our different parts. What do you enjoy most about the Skills USA competition? Just the fun that it brings and the teamwork, because we've, my, me and my team have be, become close because of it. Teams of five go head-to-head -head in the highly spirited Quiz Bowl. Um, well, there's, a, there's several questions that they at, um, ask and kind of like Jeopardy. Quiz Bowl is a mix of questions. There's no really way to refer it. It's just like a mix of everything. What kind of questions are there? The combination is current events, this gives you a say handbook. Uh, there's a lot of medical questions and a little bit of math history. Yeah. Skills USA standards, social studies, politics, science, math. But they're rather simple questions. <laughs> Apple Valley Unified School District high schools have been very successful in Skills USA competition. Apple Valley High School does a fantastic job every year in SkillsUSA uh, at the regional, state, and national level. We have many students that advance from a regional level that we're at today to the state level to represent their school and their district as the top in their area. There are six regions in California. They compete at the state level, and if they win there, they get to move on to the national level where they represent the entire state of California to the nation, which is a fantastic honor. Every year, Apple Valley High School has around 10 students or so that get that honor to go represent at that level. Uh, last year, we had students in, um, in web pages design and digital cinema and promotional bulletin board going to represent all of California and they did very well. Digital cinema and web page design both got sixth in the nation. What's the secret? Why is Apple Valley High School so successful in Skills USA competition? I have to say it's definitely because of the comprehensive nature of our school. So we have a vast offering of career technical education courses. Uh, the things that students are able to find and love at our school is so many more than you tend to see at schools nowadays. Uh, we do more than just the academic curriculum. We have the honors programs, we have all those. We also have auto shop and welding and uh, culinary arts and a, a vast uh, computer program. So with all of those offerings, the student can find a place that they want to be and that they can connect to and use that to succeed and find something they're passionate about and, and we show that in our competitions and how well we do. The Vanguard Preparatory School Millennium Falcons robotics team advances to the LEGO First Championship Tournament at Legoland. Vanguard's team won the Project Presentation Award and captured fifth place overall in the regional qualifying tournament. Well, last year we had a way better robot design because last year we had, it was simple and no stuff. Of course, um, it was a little wobbly sometimes and of course this year we actually have a way better base and support and all that. Teams have three rounds performing the same mission, a mission of their choosing. We just had our second round and uh, so in that in, in the rounds we have to get our robot prepared and we of course have to uh, do the missions that come in the mat and we did about like five missions. Right after like the first run we 
take off certain attachments because we have like certain different attachments and uh, so we just uh, switch the attachments so we can do other missions. What's the hardest part about the whole competition? Is there anything that's most challenging? Honestly, it would be the stress. The stress, honestly, like, is the robot going to work or, um, like, are we doing good, you know? Yeah, it's the stress for me. Mariana's has four teams competing with students as young as third graders participating. There's three parts. Well, there's kind of four parts. There's the robot and then the robot design. And there's core values, which is teamwork. And then there's a project. For Miley Shepard, this is her fifth season competing. My team is Orbit Explorers and we have a Lego Robotics um, competition and I'm on the robot so I'm, I do the robot. Barstow's STEM Punks team wins the Robot Performance Award and Core Values Award. Five teams qualify for the championship tournament to be held at Legoland in December. Let's go back to 2015. The Apple Valley High School Precision Machining and Design Program prepares students for careers in engineering, design, and machining. Students gain hands-on experience on cutting-edge machinery, literally and figuratively. These students are working on the CNC lathe. I'm actually from AP Physics, and right now we're working on a project, so what we have to do is we have to make a boat. And so I can use the machines we have here, like the CNC lathe and the manual lathe, to help me build my boat and, you know, to cut out the parts and things like that. Basically, our test is to use the blueprints and to create this. And so what I'm doing right now is I put some bluing ink on here, and I use a little scribe to help mark off my points. So that would be these points right here and I'm trying to zero out my axes, which are those over there. And so I just want to make sure that they're zeroed off so when I go in and make my cuts, I have the right measurements. According to the blueprint, it says we have to go 0.75 across each of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to start and this is what I did on this. So what I did was I took this and I basically measured out 0.75 on each. So I can see this is exactly 0.75. So I did the same thing on my work piece. And I took it and I measured it out. And I put little scribes so that way I made sure I had my correct measurements. That's what that was The CNC lathe is just one part of the program students experience as they become college and career ready. The program is a joint investment of the Apple Valley Unified School District, the San Bernardino County Board of Supervisors, and business partners. Apple Valley High School senior Itzel Gonzalez has been crowned California's Miss Amazing Teen Queen 2019. This pageant is the largest in the nation dedicated to celebrating and empowering girls and women with disabilities. We met Itzel Gonzalez when she was competing in Skills USA baking competition. Hi, my name is Itzel Gonzalez. It's Al Gonzalez is among the 55 Apple Valley High School students advancing to state in Skills USA competition. She is in the Action Skills category. In her leadership presentation, It's Al Gonzalez tells she has Down syndrome. I have Down syndrome. I work in I work in really real hard. She has a part time now, job. I work um I work a restaurant. I work a um, mama piano. And reveals her future plans to attend college yeah, and eventually open goal, her own uh, bakery. I will go to college. Open open my own bakery. Competing in Skills USA is just one ingredient in this outstanding student's recipe for preparing for her future. I work in really, really hard. Congratulations to California Miss Amazing Teen Queen Itzel Gonzalez, and best of luck in the national pageant in Chicago in August. 
The Victor Valley Community Services Council is offering free homemaker services, transportation, and activities for seniors ages 60 and older with mobility challenges. Residents can join the group in its monthly shopping trips where they pick you up, take you home, and assist with lifting and carrying items. For more information or to reserve your seat on the bus, call 760-243-9646. The Victor Valley Community Services Council is offering free mobility devices do you know a senior in need of a mobility device? The Victor Valley Community Services Council provides free wheelchairs, walkers, bedside commodes, canes, and more to those who qualify. The agency recently received a generous donation of wheelchairs from High Desert Second Chance. For more information, please call 760-243-9646. A new website has been launched for First District news, events, and resources. The homepage is said to have everything a viewer needs at a glance, including a First District calendar, board meeting calendar and agendas, and contact information. The resources page shows tabs for helpful services, district activities, local chambers of commerce, and economic development links. The website is Americans with Disabilities Act Compliant. One of the county's latest campaigns is Opportunity Lives, Works, and Plays Here. This partnership between the Economic and Workforce Development Departments aims to assist businesses and nonprofits with hiring, relocating, and or expansion free of charge. They also have an on-the-job training program that reimburses businesses with 50% of a new hire's hourly wage and training expenses for up to three months. San Bernardino County birth and death certificates are now available online. San Bernardino County's Vital Statistics Registration Office has launched a new service that allows residents to purchase certified copies of birth and death certificates online. Currently, the service is available for births and deaths that occurred in the past two years. Records for events older than two years can be obtained at San Bernardino County Hall of Records. The Bureau of Land Management has awarded two grants totaling almost $5 million to accelerate the training and placement of excess wild horses and burros into private care. These grants are part of the BLM's efforts to encourage more adopters to give a wild horse or burro a good home. The Adoption Incentive Program provides up to $1,000 to adopt an untrained wild horse or burro from the BLM. The goal of the program is to reduce BLM's recurring costs to care for unadopted and untrained wild horses and burros while helping to enable the BLM to confront a growing overpopulation of wild horses and burros on fragile public rangelands. Thanks to its adoption incentive program and the online corral, the BLM has doubled the rate of private care placement over the last five years. Your help is being sought to clear our San Bernardino County shelters by adopting, not shopping. If you are looking for a new four-legged friend, the first district is home to several animal shelters with dogs and cats in need of loving homes. Local shelters include the Hesperia Animal Shelter on Santa Fe Avenue and the Apple Valley Animal Shelter on Powhatan Road. For more information, please call 760-240-7555. Terry Kurtz here, throwing out an invitation for you to catch up with High Desert Sports Activities. Your High Desert Sports Report, showing three times every day on Victor Valley TV. 7 and 11 every morning, 4 every afternoon. Your half hour. High Desert Sports Report, the area's only video action highlights coverage of high school athletes, teams, and sports programs, Victor Valley College Rams, and Barstow College Vikings athletic events, including flashbacks to this date in high desert sports and entertainment history. 
We hope you'll join us right here on Victor Valley TV. That's a wrap on this edition of Terry Kurtz Online. On behalf of Victor Valley Television Productions, thank you for watching. We hope to see you again next time around.